This talk is called A Bitter Old Man's Haskell Guide. The saga begins and shall serve as an introduction to my video series regarding the Haskell programming language. This video will discuss what Haskell is, which is, that includes a very brief description of the Haskell programming language, an overview of what Haskell lacks, and an overview of what Haskell has. We will also be discussing the main advantages of using Haskell, including the language's functional nature, the high maintainability of programs which are written in Haskell, and the speed of most Haskell programs. However, we will also be discussing some potential disadvantages of using Haskell, including the learning difficulties which are imposed by the very different nature of the Haskell language, and just the fact that it's uncommon. After that, I will explain why I think you should learn Haskell, and why I think you might like to use this guide. I'd like to apologize for any noises you hear in the background, my my cat's in the room with me. I'm this guy. Here's my job title. I'm an intelligence analyst. Not to be confused with a computer programmer. I should mention that while you're free to ask questions about my job, I can't answer all of them. Just due to security risks. I have a diverse set of skills, including mathematics, where I consider my main strength to be understanding and applying concepts well. Because computers were made for a reason. I don't need to know how to... You know, it's good to know how to do that, but... I don't need to be able to quickly solve for variables and equations. You know, we, we we made these things for a reason. And it would be ridiculous for me to sit here and say that you need to solve equations by hand when I'm trying to get people to learn a particular programming language. On that note, one of my skills actually is computer programming. Although I do not enjoy this. As you may have assumed, Haskell is one of my favorite programming languages. And I... I use computer programming. Actually, you know what? Let's just skip that bit, because that's fairly obvious here. I should... I'll also mention that uh, one of my other skills is motivating people who are like me by shouting at these people. Although this approach has the potential to backfire, but I haven't had that happen yet, at least not in person. Let's move on to discussing what Haskell is. In a nutshell, Haskell is a Turing-complete, functional language which can be applied to solve real-world problems, contrary to popular belief. Cat wants to be petted. seen a lot of people asking about whether or not Haskell is actually useful. Yes, it absolutely is. I know this firsthand because I've used Haskell to solve problems I've had. Moving on to what Haskell lacks, thing which I found to be the most jarring, 
is Haskell's lack of traditional loops. Uh, you know, such things as for and while loops. Languages, or imperative languages such as C and Perl, have these. Haskell does not. Instead, you have a number of potential solutions to these sorts of things in Haskell. One such solution is using map. Where you see this snippet of C code here. And you also have a snippet of Haskell code. These two programs are actually equivalent. This thing here, this thing in parentheses beginning with a backslash is um it's a lambda expression man I hope you heard that, that was cute you can't just meow anyway, this is called a lambda expression and I might get into those later in a future video but what this does is this prints for all elements in the list a number followed by a space. I'll let you connect the dots as to how these are equivalent. Recursion can also be used, but you know, I, I, I tend to think of recursion as being a fairly special purpose thing. I generally don't like using it. Haskell is also a bit... well, Haskell lacks the ability to perform I.O. operations from non-I.O. type functions. You see here, we have a function in C which takes a single argument doesn't actually use that argument. You know, it just prints ass to the console, doesn't even end the line. And it returns one. But see here there there's nothing <laughs> Sorry about that. In this function's type, there's nothing which states that this performs any kind of IO operation. In Haskell, that sort of thing is necessary. For instance, you use monadic functions. Oh, right. Monads. We'll get on to that. On that note, we'll move on to what Haskell has. My particular favorite thing is Haskell is officially documented via a formal specification. All aspects of the language are outlined, and the report, the language report, specifically states that the Haskell community is completely free to modify that report for any reasons as long as it's clearly marked as being a modified version. Speaking of monads before, Haskell has monads, which are known to scare the piss out of beginners and be, quote, very unique, unquote. We also have strong typing, which means that often you can, um, get the gist of the purpose of a function by just looking at its type signature, and you can search for functions by searching for type signatures on Google. We also have lazy execution, which I don't really care for the name, but it's a very useful thing. Stuff is calculated only if the stuff is actually used in the program. For instance, you can construct an infinitely long list until Haskell to take the first 12 elements of that list. Haskell does not hang. 
Haskell returns the first twelve elements and stops. We also have a damn good compiler in the form of the Glasgow Haskell compiler. I say it's damn good because it is ludicrously fast, at least for such a high-level language. The speeds of the Glasgow Haskell compiler's output often rival the speeds of Clang's output, where Clang is a very minimal C compiler. This compiler also offers a REPL interface via GHCI. This is nice for debugging programs or just writing new functions. I use it for both. We will now discuss the main advantages of using Haskell. Beginning with Haskell's functional nature, Functional programming has a number of advantages, which you can find more detail about if you just search on whatever search engine you like. Advantages of functional programming. These are just my favorite advantages. Functional programming tends to have a fairly strong resemblance to mathematical notation in part because these functions are actually functions in the mathematical sense. Meaning that they're, they're stateless. They don't modify global variables. Another advantage is that understanding functional programs, well-written functional programs, is often far easier and understanding well-written non-functional programs. But that's just an opinion thing. Also, as I previously stated, functions' purposes can be approximately determined by inspecting the types of these functions. And, arguably most importantly, when you use functional programming, you see that there's a large subset of programming challenges which can be solved very easily, even trivially, when using functional programming. But what about the maintainability I mentioned? Haskell is terse and high level. Due to that terseness, programs are often fairly easily rewritten. Which is nice when the pre-existing program isn't efficient. Also, I find that understanding well-written Haskell programs is very easy. We also have that strong type system I mentioned. The strong type system is useful because this aids in debugging. Basically what this says is that you know, you define a type for the functions you write and it tells you if the function's output doesn't match that type and it doesn't compile, which saves some headaches in the, in the debugging process. I'm not sure what I meant when I, write, when I wrote that the strong type system simplifies writing solutions for small problems. <laughs> now on to speed. Writing good Haskell programs 
is a fairly slow process. Notice that I said good. That applies to every programming language out there. But writing Haskell programs in general is a pretty fast process. Now it's, it's fairly easy once you understand the language. Also, the outputs of compilers, as I mentioned, can be stupidly fast, but Haskell presents a huge set of opportunities to really mess up the speed of the program. I've done that before, when I go in and I see, oh, why did I do that? And I change it, and the program runs about ten times faster. Just keep that in mind if you do decide to learn this. Some potential disadvantages of Haskell. Well, what I think are the main disadvantages are just how different Haskell is from a lot of other programming languages. Namely, Haskell is declarative. Which, in a nutshell, this means that Haskell is extremely high level and the computer is told to do something instead of being given instructions to do something. You know, this means that you need to approach problems a bit differently. As I mentioned, you don't have loops. But also, Haskell doesn't actually allow redefining variables in compiled programs. Where that's one of the other things that tripped me up when I was first learning it. Also in differences. Actually not also in differences, but here's an example of not using loops. This up here is a C++ program where we define a, not a class, but a type big int, which is equivalent to integer in Haskell, which is just an integer of unbounded size. Anyway, here, in the C++ version of this program, which is a fairly shitty primality test, we just check to see if any number between... Actually, these are equivalent. I apologize for that. That's stupid. Anyway, instead of being divided by 2, this should be an integer square root function. Anyway, we iterate the variable Juliet, which we first define as being equal to 2 because everything's divisible by 1. We increment that until that reaches the integer square root function of the input x-ray. And if, if x-ray is congruent to zero modulo Juliet, then variable kilo is set to false because X-ray clearly has a divisor, and primes do not have divisors. That's the definition of a prime. We then return kilo. Whereas here, Foxtrot contains a list of the integers between 2 and the integer square root of Juliet where Juliet is, in this case, the input of is prime. We then check... 
We then return the elements of Foxtrot such that Juliet is congruent to zero modulo an element of this list. Which, if it's prime, then we won't have any elements in there. I just think that this is a much more elegant solution than Haskell. At first I didn't. At first I thought, hey, that's shitty. You know, that's, that's hard to read. But really, that, that skepticism wore off pretty quickly. One of the other cases where Haskell is very different are the monads which I mentioned earlier. Monads are integral to Haskell with this little operator called bind which is used for monads even being visible in some logos. For instance, the X monad window manager which I use as you see here, there's your logo. Please make note of that. I need to state that explaining monads is notoriously difficult. You know, you don't need to have any kind of background in category theory or anything to understand them, but I'd recommend looking into category theory if you really want to fully understand monads. Because these are not easily explained at all, I suspect that monads will be the real challenge of this video series. I'll probably have a few videos dedicated to explaining monads. I've seen monads being explained as being like burritos, which, you know, I thought, what a stupid concept. Then I actually read the article and, yeah, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's, it's, it's silly, but the argument was good. I've also just described them as being like rappers where thing is that doesn't make sense unless you have experience with monads but the most important thing here is monads are really a blessing in disguise they simplify a lot of stuff speaking of simplifying stuff Haskell has a lot of weird syntactic quirks to it, such as this dollar sign operator, which is just used to change the associativity of operations. That'll make sense if you play around with it. We also have that bind operator I mentioned earlier, where, you know, if, if, if you're a C programmer, then you look at that, and you're gonna assume that's some kind of right shift operator. But no, totally unrelated. Also, Haskell is relatively akin to mathematical notation where a lot of programming languages I've used are not. Even R is very different. Parentheses also need not be used by functions. Whereas in a lot of programming languages I've used, the arguments of, fu the arguments of functions are always contained within parentheses. Semicolons are unnecessary, and semicolons are unnecessary, although I prefer adding semicolons because I think that's easier to read.
Another disadvantage of using Haskell is just the lack of people who use Haskell. It is an uncommon programming language. If I remember correctly, then it's not even in the top 20 most common. Of course, stuff might have changed. It often does. So please, if you hear this and you know that's wrong, then tell me it's wrong and you know, drop a source for that in the comments. I would greatly appreciate that. And I'll add a little thing to the description mentioning that. Anyway, that uncommon nature is bad because you don't have as much assistance as you would with another program because having assistance relies on having people there to assist you. You also have fewer compilers because, again, fewer people are there to make the compilers. And you have fewer libraries because fewer people are there to make the libraries. So on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so... On to the point of this introduction. Why should you learn Haskell? One of the things which I think is important is that Haskell forces learning to think about problems differently and using different solutions for these problems. Because Haskell's solutions differ from imperative solutions. And even the solutions of a lot of different functional programming languages. Sorry about that. It's also worth learning because this is what made me learn it. Haskell is an extremely practical language. You know, as I mentioned, it's Turing complete. It can compute whatever you want. And you can quickly create solutions to problems with Haskell. And if you do them correctly, these solutions are fast and maintainable, which is unheard of. And because Haskell is extremely high level, the source code is portable. Anyway, why should he use this guide as opposed to uh, some other jerk's video? I hope to be humorous, enjoyable, practical, you know, ideally a bit relaxing, that's actually one of the points of this video, if you look at the title there, but anyway. also, most future videos will primarily feature the text editor or just the command line, because to tell you the truth, I don't like doing this theoretical stuff, I like the hands-on stuff. I learn better that way. If you don't, then I recommend reading the spec, because if you actually read that specification, then you'll have a damn good understanding of the language. I reference that often, and it is extremely helpful. But in short, you can think of a video equivalent of warning you a Haskell for great good, which I very much recommend reading, by the way. Also, I told you to take note of that thing that was me, you know, making fun of learning with Haskell in a silly drawing style. If you're still here, then let's go! After I release the next video, that might take a while. Whoops.